Yakima Basin has to have more water. More water for irrigators, more water for cities and towns, and more water for endangered steelhead and salmon. If I even have a 50, 60, 70 percent water supply, it affects the size of my fruit. And at harvest time, you don't want it. Walmart doesn't want it, Safeway doesn't want it. And so what I'm finding out is if I don't have a full water supply, then I can't meet the needs of the consumer with what they're demanding on fruit size. And so then I am losing money to the point where I can't afford to grow fruit on the, on this, in the valley. Yes, I've been impacted, we've been impacted, our neighbors have been Im impacted by the lack of water. Yakima Valley irrigators have been frustrated since the 1980s when junior water rights holders saw their water deliveries cut by two-thirds. This struggle has been intensified by drought conditions, increasing agricultural product demand, and competition for water by other water users. This and other actions have been devastating to irrigators and to the Yakima Basin's economy. But there are a lot of other issues to consider. That's why landmark conservation laws, like that which created the Yakima River Basin Water Enhancement Project, or YARBWEP, was enacted by Congress back in 1979. The intent was to find a balance between various water users through water conservation, fish passage, and habitat enhancement, and to pursue new water storage and expansion, groundwater storage, and water marketing as potential tools to manage growing water demands. The ARBWEP program is successful on many fronts, establishing a strong anadromous fisheries program, expanding water conservation and efficient water use, and building unique partnerships among water users, environmental groups, municipalities, government agencies, and the tribes. Meanwhile, the Yakima Basin's decades-old chronic water shortage problem has generated a multitude of studies over the years. The studies take a long time. Uh, what happens is they drag on and on. People come and people go, and uh, you end up studying things you've already studied. Now, finally, Basin stakeholders agree the time might be right for action. What if we had more consistency up and down the basin? How much, how much water savings could you achieve with water conservation in the municipal sector if you had consistent programs? In 2009, the Washington Department of Ecology and the Bureau of Reclamation formed a working body of representatives from the Yakima Nation, federal, state, county, and city governments environmental organizations, and irrigation districts. Known as the Yakima River Basin Water Enhancement Project Work Group, they met approximately every two weeks for six months to hear each other out and to develop a mutually acceptable draft plan for the basin. Over these decades, we've gone through um, adjudication of the Aquavilla court cases. We've gone through and we've had, and we've kind of drawn our lines in the sand and we've had our fights. I think we're coming together now, which plays a really important time into to where we're in the room discussing the real changes that need to happen to, to make us all whole. And I, that's a new conversation that we haven't necessarily had the opportunity to in the past. This active and progressive work group has improved working relationships among each other and developed a comprehensive forward-thinking approach for addressing the basin's current and future water needs. This plan became known as the Integrated Water Resource Management Plan. In an age of soaring federal deficits, work group members recognize funding is limited in that the integrated plan approach has the best chance to succeed. The integrated plan condenses a room full of studies and in-depth reports to seven elements. Enhanced water conservation, new water storage or expansion, groundwater storage, water marketing, modifications to existing operations and facilities, fish passage, and fish habitat enhancement. Opinions vary about individual projects, but everyone agrees that all of the seven elements need to be included in the final integrated water resource management plan. The Washington Department of Ecology and Reclamation expect to have this final plan completed by early 2011.
The economic health of this region is directly linked to the basin's water development and supply. As countless studies have pointed out, millions of dollars are spent by the recreating public on a healthy fishery. The Arbweb Work Group believes the integrated plan will be one of the largest ecological restorations ever conducted, restoring stream flows and improving fish habitat. It will also make the water more reliable for irrigators while stimulating the economy throughout central Washington. I think both uh, river recreation and, and quality of life and salmon and farming are all really important to the, the way of life in the Northwest and, and in, the, in central Washington here. And, uh, and if, if we uh, don't readjust the way we manage water in this part of the country, we're not going to be able to hold on to all those things. Um, and if we do it right, we'll have our best chance to, to do that, even with the challenges faced by uh, climate change and population growth. It's really important for the tribe, but it's also an icon for the Northwest. And salmon have always been here, and there's a lot of people that don't uh, fish for them, but just uh, feel better knowing there are salmon in the rivers here. 120 years ago, the Yakima River supported annual salmon runs of hundreds of thousands of fish. When development came, three species, the sockeye, summer chinook, and coho, disappear from the river altogether. Thanks to the Yakima Nation's reintroduction efforts, natural and hatchery populations of these salmon species have returned to much of the basin. The Yakima Nation sees the integrated plan as a key to sustainability. This balance is a key thing, but I think more important for us is what does this do? It, it, it's going to deliver us into the future to where we have fish and we can have agriculture and we can um, work with a, with a diverse group of stakeholders to try to address very challenging issues such as this. And, and so this, this plan and this process, you know, we've, we've put a lot of effort into to putting them back into the direction where it's about this integrated package where in-stream, out-of-stream, and priorities are, are directed towards the things that I think are, are the most challenging in, in this valley. In communities like Sila, Sunnyside, and Prosser, success is linked to reliable water supplies if they are continued to grow and thrive. Uh, clearly, agriculture and fish need water to survive. Not only do they need water to survive, but they need adequate water, dependable water, on a long-term basis and not be susceptible to the current droughts and future droughts that we anticipate through um, ongoing climate changes. There's also an economic demand for our environmental quality. So there's many, many people who recreate, who uh, enjoy the, uh, the, um, you know, the natural resource amenities of, of, of central Washington and um, keeping our streams healthy and restoring abundant um, uh, runs of fish is very important to the, to the uh, uh, tourism economy as well. By early 2011, the Washington Department of Ecology and various work group members will deliver a final integrated plan to Congress, urging them to fund and implement a solution that will end decades of study and review. The integrated plan will establish a framework for solving a 30-year dilemma that has caused economic uncertainty, inhibited growth, and limited recovery of Northwest fisheries. It is not a study, but an adaptable and integrated water resource management tool that will address Yakima Basin's water needs today and into the future. For more information on the process, the plan, and cost estimates for various plan elements, visit these websites at Bureau of Reclamation and the Washington Department of Ecology.